Here we are at uh, Harrison Street at the Exchange, uh, which was the uh, base for uh, Lamont Young and Marion Zazila from 1980 to 1985, and uh, also for Pondit Pranat. I remember that at, at that time, uh, my niece Libby uh, was in uh, New York, uh, possibly visiting in 1980. Uh, Christopher Hennix was also uh, here in New York. Uh, these were the years in which uh, uh, the DIA Foundation uh, made these uh, uh, very considerable resources available to uh, Lamont and Marion. And uh, the trading floor of the exchange uh, was devoted to uh, a major work Uh, involving uh, Marion's uh, lighted uh, mobiles uh, from the ceiling and uh, Lamont's uh, uh, electronically generated cords. Uh, there were also uh, cords in the uh, uh, stairwells, uh, electronically generated cords. Uh, a very great deal happened here. Uh, <clears throat> I was not uh, that close to the situation, uh, but uh, you know there were stories about a uh, great deal of uh, extravagance, uh, uh, the dia, and so forth and so on. Uh, uh, they certainly had uh, sumptuous quarters, and uh, uh, there were entire floors uh, devoted to classrooms. <laughs> There was a recording studio and living quarters on the fifth floor or something like that. Uh, uh, an entire gallery devoted to Marion's drawings. Uh, <clears throat> Pranat gave uh, concerts over here. It must have been a considerable number. I'm trying to uh, remember. It may have been after his uh, stroke. Uh, but uh, he was still uh, um, still could give a, a considerable account of himself, and uh, but uh, I remember uh, coming to uh, a number of those concerts here uh, with with Christer, with my niece, and. Uh, I must have taken a class or classes from Pranat here. Uh, toward the, uh, uh, by the way, uh, right across the street from here is uh, Puffy's Tavern, uh, the local bar, uh, probably uh, very much frequented by artists, probably more so than I know. And. Uh, uh, I remember at that time uh, uh, I was uh, hanging with somebody named Gus and we came over here together to see the, uh, uh, the installation on the trading floor, the mobiles and the, uh, 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 the uh, uh, loudspeaker, the loudspeaker piece, the tones, and uh, then we had a uh, uh, we left, and I, I remember us having a conversation about what we had just seen. And uh, you know, I think that uh, one of Gus's comments was that uh, uh, you sort of have to uh, create the piece yourself. From uh, uh, I mean, in other words, that there is no there is no thematic articulation. That you sort of have to create the piece yourself uh, from. Uh, the uh, the cues, uh, the, the mechanical cues that they're providing. Uh, when you walked around on the trading floor, uh, it produced the equivalent of a, a melody, since uh, you would you would hear different uh, tones at uh, different points in space. Uh, but I I mentioned that because uh, that led me to uh, uh, eventually to write down my thoughts. Uh, about that installation, and, and they, 
have been published. Uh, that's, that was sort of the, the origin of the published uh, piece on the installation. Uh, these were, uh, as I say, they were extremely opulent years for Lamont and Marion, and then in uh, 1985, for some reason, uh, Dia may have come under different management, it may have changed its policy, and uh, they were abruptly evicted. Uh, Lamont was especially upset because he felt that he was just getting the sort of the stairwells and so forth tuned with these uh, uh, sustained chords. Uh, I mean, it, it was a remarkable architectural effect, I must say that. And uh, so uh, there were there were protests and so forth and so on, but uh, uh, they were evicted and so they returned full time to the Church Street location, uh, which they have had, you know, for the last 45 years or so.